Hi guys, I'm Kesha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee time to discuss movies and horror. And today I'm here to talk to you about Renfield. It's coffee time. So Renfield is a movie that I had mixed feelings about because Dracula is my favorite like horror book classic and I've always loved Dracula by um, Coppola. It's been one of my favorite movies of all times. It was also one of my first horror movies that I ever saw. So the character of Dracula has been one of my favorites always and vampires in general is something that I enjoy. Also on the other hand I love Nicolas Cage. The love that I have found for Nick Cage in the last years is immense. <laughs> I think mostly for me it kick-started with Mandy after I saw him in that role. That's where I knew that I had fallen in love with this new Nick Cage that we were getting. And you know after Willy's Wonderland and other amazing things I'm just you know I would watch anything that has Nick Cage in it at this point. But I knew this movie was going to be a bit more focused on the character of Renfield and not on Dracula. And on top of that, I knew it was going to be horror comedy, which I know I say it all the time, but it's not always something that works for me. So I was excited slash a little bit scared to go into this one. So I'm here today to let you guys know my thoughts on the film. Renfield is a 2023 American horror comedy directed and produced by Chris McKay. The movie tells the story of the character Renfield, who is part of, you know, the classic monsters and he belongs together with Dracula. And there was a talk back in 2017 because the mummy didn't really perform well. And so they were a little bit skeptical accepting Renfield. And it was after a change in the script and it turning the movie a little bit more into a horror comedy when it was finally really accepted and finally the studio wanted to go through with it. And the filming of the film finally took place from February to August 2022 and it has hit theaters in some places already so I'm here to let you guys know my spoiler free review. In this modern monster tale of Dracula's loyal servant, Nicholas Holt stars as Renfield, the tortured aide to history's most narcissistic boss, Dracula. Renfield is forced to procure his master's prey and do his every bidding. But now, after centuries of servitude, Renfield is ready to see if there is life outside the shadow of the Prince of Darkness. If only he could figure out how to end this codependency. We're going to see at the beginning of the film an introduction to the characters and we're going to see how Renfield meets Dracula and how Dracula takes this poor young man and basically turns him into his familiar, his servant, somebody that will do everything for him. Renfield was just trying to get a broker deal and ended up becoming Dracula's servant. So we already start with, you know, like a fun tone in the film. It is humor from beginning to end. It is a true horror comedy intended to be like that. And I think part of the humor for the majority of the movie works because the movie embraces that silliness. Dracula turns Renfield into an immortal so he can help him forever and ever and gives him also a talent. He becomes really strong um, if he eats a bug. So yeah, that's the deal. You eat a bug and you have super strength and super speed. 90 years later, Renfield is a little bit tired of serving Dracula. He started of having to look for people to basically feed <laughs> to him to keep him alive and well. And Dracula is currently struggling as well. So Renfield feels like this is now his chance to finally do something for himself. Renfield discovers a 12-step self-support group for people that are struggling with codependencies. And he decides to join the group. <laughs> and that is one of the funniest things about the film. I feel like that idea alone should have been something that they 
they should have explored it even more than they did in the film. Cage's performance is great. He is basically more of a supporting role in this case because we do follow Renfield as our main character. Um, but his present is always made aware. Every time he comes on screen, he thrives. He knows what he's doing. He has a lot of charisma. And despite, you know, Nicolas Cage in the recent years basically just playing Nick Cage in every single movie, <laughs> I just loved him as Dracula. Then we have Renfield, who is a more complex character. He's not so, you know, straightforward as Dracula, the Prince of Darkness is. Um, Renfield is struggling because on the one side, he owes everything he has, like his immortality to Dracula, but on the other side, he would like to go back to having just a regular, boring, normal life, wearing normal clothes, and also stop feeding him people because he's starting to feel the guilt as well. Um, now, the movie is approached in a way where even the action bits, the gory bits, everything is approached with humor. One of the things that I would consider maybe a critique of mine is that when it comes to the script, there are many like subplot and other characters that are being introduced that do not get really the time to be developed. We don't really get to see their full like background. They're kind of just brushed out here and there. And I feel like we get lost a little bit in so many little subplots. The main story should have been just Renfield being sick and tired of serving Dracula and him trying to figure out his life. And it would have had a little bit more of, you know, depth and personality and it would have been better if they would have focused a little bit more on that main concept that they had because I thought the story was really great. But we get introduced to other characters where we're supposed to care. Like Rachel, she's a police officer and she is one of the only good cops left. She's trying to do really the, the good thing. Um, she's not corrupt. She's trying to fight crime. And they're trying to give her you know, some sort of importance in the movie, but it doesn't really work. And then there's another character that's really obnoxious and that is the son of a drug dealer um, that also they're trying to kind of take the viewer and, you know, see this guy and try to care for him, but it doesn't really work either. So there's many like subplots and characters are being introduced and I just felt like they should have focused a little bit more on the main story than in all of these little subplots. We would have had then a more of a movie similar to what we do in the shadows if we would have just taken Renfield being pissed and tired of Dracula going to a self-support group and trying to figure out his life without his master it would have been a lot funnier I think when it comes to the makeup and all of the effects and stuff I thought they were great they were really well executed Dracula you know we see him in different stages of life and different times where he was a little bit more sick or recovering from something that happened to him and I really loved all the makeup that they gave him um, so I really did enjoy that part of the film I love the colors they're mostly like the colors that you see in the poster are the colors that pop all the time like the greens and the reds during the film and I really like that pop of color that we would get in a lot of the scenes. When it comes to the horror, fear not, you're gonna get a lot of gore. Limbs are gonna fly, heads are gonna explode. Um, so you're gonna get your fair share of gore. Now this is not a movie meant to be scary or atmospheric in the sense of being creepy and unsettling. This is a movie that is just supposed to be action-packed, fun and gory. That's you know, that's the way it is. And I'll take it. I'll take gore. It's fine. Um, it was really, really good. I thought, you know, even though we didn't get anything fresh, there was no fresh blood in this movie. The things that I've seen, I have seen them kind of done here and there. But it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of different types of kills and I was satisfied with it. And there's a lot of blood that is being spilled in the film. At some point, you feel like Dracula is fighting people almost like a Mortal Kombat thing and it's quite strange but it works in this film specifically because it's Nicolas Cage playing Dracula and the way that he plays it with that charisma it actually makes sense that he would fight them like that. 
At the end of the day, I gave this movie a 3 out of 5 because I feel like it is a well-executed horror comedy that doesn't overstay its welcome. It's gory, it's stylized, it's over the top and it's campy and that is kind of what you could expect if you have seen the trailer. So I feel like that's what, you know, I was going in for and I think Nicholas Holt did such a good job with this character. He's fantastic, I really enjoy him, especially since I saw him in The Menu which has been one of my favorite ones of his. Um, and of course, if you love Nicolas Cage, you also need to check this one out. The only thing that I felt this movie was missing was mystery, surprise, like because you already knew how things were gonna go, how things were gonna end, so there was no mystery, there was no many surprises or anything like that, so that is something that I was missing in the film. I would say if you enjoy horror comedies, if you enjoy Nicolas Cage, if you want to see some gore, this is a great movie to have fun in the movies, to just have a good time. So let me know down below, you guys, what you thought of the film, if you've already seen it or are you planning on watching it. I hope you guys enjoyed my spoiler-free review of the film and I hope to see you all, as always, in our next coffee time. Bye!